Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the match preview. I'm joined by Gary Spain. I suppose you could say Ireland's number one fan. I don't know, <laughs> anyway. So. But uh, no, he travels home and away to all okay. the games. Um, and you, every time I look at your, your timeline, there's, you're at a new game uh, every week, whether it's around the league or it's up north or it's a women's game. So delighted to be joined by Gary. And we're here to talk about the Switzerland game preview. Kind of looking at them, looking at us who we could, should be, I suppose, afraid of and, you know, looking at their results. And, you know, I suppose we'll, we'll kick things off with their, just their, their uh, results in the Nations League. They've obviously played two games in our group and that's because that's tied in with the Nations League. Yeah, so the, the way, we, because we're in the smaller group, the, the, the other four teams had to play in June and Switzerland were tied up with the Nations League playing against Portugal and England. So they had only the two March games. So they have a full programme. They have six games left, whereas we have a, we have only four games left. We have a couple of friendlies to play as well. Yeah, well, so, the, the games that they did play, like they, they, they beat Belgium 5-2. And if, I, if I'm correct... Well, that was back in November. That was to qualify. So they, they, they hammered Belgium. Yeah, 5-2, yeah, yeah. as you say, to qualify for the Nations League finals. So they actually won... They were in the League A and they won their section. They were in with Belgium and Iceland. So it was pretty impressive. They they beat Iceland home and away as well. Yeah, uh, I think they went down a goal early in that game as well against um, Belgium and came back and hammered them. Yeah, I think they might. Yeah, they were a goal or even 2 0 down. I can't yeah. remember what they certainly did. It, 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 yeah. it was a comeback, all right. Yeah. Um, then, they, then they get beaten by, yeah, I suppose you can say, Ronaldo. He was the big difference in that game yeah. against uh, Portugal. And then they get, go to get beat on penalties by England then. Yeah, they're beaten by England in a third place playoff, so I I wouldn't read too much into these third place playoffs. I don't in the World Cup or anywhere else really. Yeah, um, they they drew with England, lost on penalties, but yeah. Um, you don't buy into losing on penalties, no. <laughs> not in the third place playoff. Um, yeah, no, obviously, fair, a, obviously a playoff. If we ended up in a playoff for Euro twenty twenty and it was a penalty shootout, it's um, a lot more tense and etc. Yeah, well, kind of into the into the group then they they played. Um, Denmark and yeah so this, they started off when we were in Gibraltar um, because I was actually watching the match in a bar beside the the, the stadium in Gibraltar they they were away to so Georgia I told you all the way so, <laughs> on. so they were away to um, they were away to Georgia now they, they took them a while to to break them down but I, they won comfortably enough I think the first goal didn't come until, until the second half maybe a before the R mark or something, but I think it was a comfortable enough win in the end. And I, I'm a bit concerned myself when we go to Georgia, but that's for another day. Um, so it, it was a good win. I mean, you go there, you get three points. So then, when we were playing at home to Georgia, uh, they were at the same time facing Denmark, and uh, I suppose I and everybody else was keeping an eye on our phones and watching the score. And Switzerland went one nil, two nil, three nil up, and kind of thinking. Okay, it's us in Denmark for a runners-up spot, and Denmark scored three goals in something like the last ten or twelve minutes to come back for a draw. And I actually still think it's probably a bad result um, for us, but I know a lot of people at the time considered it a good result. Yeah, I, I, time I do will remember tell. that. All right, time people. will tell. I mean, I can see the arguments both ways. Um, I'd probably prefer. I mean, two are going to qualify. Um, we just need to get one of those two spots. It doesn't matter where you finish. That draw keeps both places available, I suppose. Um, Thursday night will tell an awful lot. So, And I know there is the, the theory as well that, I mean, and, and it's been followed on by our fantastic draw in Copenhagen, that maybe we'll get all draws. Or if we get three more draws and beat Georgia, we just need a winner in, in Denmark, Switzerland, and we're through as well. So, yeah, who knows? Yeah, I don't like that, having to rely on other teams to win for us to, to go through. I'd like to see us start doing more in that regard. Like, um, I I genuinely looking through their squad, I'm, I'm not too fearful. They're without Shakiri now, who, who tends to be their main man and, you know, pulls all the strings for them. Um, Zuber's not in the squad as well. Uh, Seferovic, who scored the hat trick against, uh, against Belgium. Belgium, he's injured as well. He's not in the squad. He's either. not in the squad. I think he's still injured at Benfica. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only one I'm kind of concerned about is Mbolo, and he's a um, he moved from uh, Schalke to Mun Perugia, Munch and Gladbach, and he's got two goals in three games, but he's only got like four goals in I think it's thirty. 
32 appearances for, for, for Switzerland, which isn't a great return in regards, you know, that. And the rest of the strikers haven't got a goal. Or if they do, I'll tell you now, because I've got my stats here. Um, if they do have a goal, no. Uh, Mbolo's the only person um, to have scored a goal. Yeah, time. no, I think Sefovic, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but he was he was one of their, their main goal threats. Yeah. Um, even if well, you go back... Mbolo scored the goal against, one of the goals against Denmark. Okay. But and, and and I know that they, it was a three-all draw against Denmark, so maybe that was an anomaly. But if you actually go back to their World Cup qualifying, they they qualified based on a, a tight defence. I don't think they scored. You know, they they won, I suppose, a lot of comfort, games comfortably, but they didn't score a huge amount of goals. They were very good at the back. They played Northern Ireland in the playoff, and basically there was one goal over the 180 minutes, and that was a penalty that was frankly it was dubious, not a penalty. Wasn't it? Oh, it was very dubious. Yeah. The referee apologised after. I mean, it wasn't even dubious actually. It wasn't a penalty, but uh, the referee VAR apologised. Might have fixed that, yeah. VAR would have fixed it. We, we could have done with VAR in Paris in 09 as well, but yeah. maybe I'm going back too far now. But um, yeah, so. Maybe there isn't a, a huge goal threat on Thursday, but they, they certainly will be tough to break down. But then the 5-2 against Belgium and the 3-all with Denmark, maybe it'll be 3 or 4, four each on Thursday. Who knows? Um, yeah. Well, you kind of look at the, the defence. I mean, Lichsteiner, who got re- released by Arsenal, didn't really have a great season last year. Uh, a bit par player, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, you have Ricardo Rodriguez, who loves scoring penalties, uh, has a really, really good left foot, good at free kicks as well. As you can imagine, um, he plays left full for them. Um, Shar, Fabian Shar, who plays for Newcastle, Newcastle he scored yeah. the weekend. Just gone, I think he scored. Yeah, the I think Newcastle. they had the equaliser against Watford, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So um, he's a, he's a good enough, he's a decent defender now, and he'll be obviously used to to yeah. our style. In of play. ways, yeah. I see similarities though, because a lot of their players aren't you know huge super says okay, Rodriguez plays for AC Milan, but it's not the AC Milan of years gone. You know, it's uh, it's it's kind of a mid-table Milan that he's playing for. You know, came from Wolfsburg again. That's where he came from. He's he's one of their star players. But you know, I know our squad's weak at the moment, and we are missing players as well. But you know, I do think that you know this. I do think that the Denmark squad that we played away from home is is superior to the team that we're going to be facing uh, this Thursday because they're without certain players. Yeah, that's probably fair comment. I mean. But maybe we know the likes of Ericsson better than than some of these mm. players. But yeah, I mean, I, I suppose the other thing is Switzerland are the the top seeds in the group, and I mean they're not a, a Spain or a Germany or an Italy or an England. They are maybe a step down from that. I, I think to be fair to them, they've consistently qualified going back over the, the last few I'm trying to think of the last time they they didn't qualify I mean yeah, they, certainly, you, you, they went to Russia they, they got out of their, their group if I remember correctly they in France they got out of the group lost to Poland in in Saint Etienne um, 2014 they, they, they got to Brazil they got out of their group again um, 2012 actually the 2012 was probably the one they didn't qualify I don't think they qualified in 2012. Yeah, now that I think of it, contract anyway, and yeah. uh, well, you wouldn't really yeah. be looking out for them, you know, until now, really. Yeah, they're not. They're, yeah, they're probably not a team that may be exciting, uh, that exciting or great to yeah. watch. But they're they're certainly uh, they're, they're probably more dependable. More, um, they've certainly done better than us in recent in yeah. recent years, and I'm sure they'll fancy their chances and they'll probably expect to qualify. Maybe that'll work to our advantage. I, I think they've probably looked at the group and said, yeah, it'll be Switzerland and Denmark. And, yeah. And may, now I hope I, uh, well, I, we hope we can prove them wrong, but uh, maybe they could st- they could still be right on that. Yeah, well, yeah. I hope you prove them wrong. I mean, looking at the midfielders, there's, um, you know, the names that don't really stand out there. You know, the only one that really does is uh, Zuber and Granit Xhaka of Arsenal, who obviously gave away a horrendous foul. Uh, he did on, on Sunday, Sunday, yeah. So. Who, if he does something like that, rash in the box or something like that, and maybe someone like Callum Robinson or something, happy days. Yeah, I just had to, I was just wincing a bit on my Twitter timeline when all the um, the Arsenal fans were complaining about, Irish Irish Gunners were complaining about Xhaka and saying, oh no, does that mean he's going to stick one in from 30 yards on Thursday yeah. night as well? So. Well, that's the thing, you never yeah. know what you're getting with him. He's very, yeah very inconsistent player and a bit of an oddball at that um, yeah. but like they've got uh, Freuler um, Renato Stefan 
Gibriel So, Christian Fasnacht, uh, Dennis Zakaria. I, I can't, like, Zakaria scored for them. Um, Zuber scored for them. He's out. And Jack has scored for them as well as Freuder. So they, they, they have midfielders that can score goals. But then again, so do we. I mean, like, Hendrick, Hauerhin. Um, these types of players so I mean as I said uh, they might have scored more goals um, well they've, they've played less games but like they've scored against there's three against Denmark and then they've got the goals against Georgia as well yeah. they have firepower but I do think when they had the firepower they had better players in the squad whereas this time around I just don't think that they have as much that we have to be that fearful of them. I just you know Nate McCarthy said today in the press conference that you know we, we want to get at them and we want to try and win like we, we, he would take a draw but he's not playing for a draw yeah I mean maybe maybe it might change on Thursday night I, I, I think a win would just be so huge Oh, well, in yeah. the whole context of qualifying I mean if we could win this game we would be in fantastic shape we would I think almost have a foot in the finals because We've already we've already got a, a fantastic draw in Copenhagen, and if we can do the business, I, I Tbilisi is going to be very tough. Um, but if, if we could win on Thursday night, I mean, the best the Swiss can do then is match our points total. And no matter what, we'd be going into the last game against Denmark with a great shout of qualifying. Um, and part part of the problem, I suppose, is we have four we have four very tough games. And we're probably going to have to beat Georgia and probably going to have to win another one. And maybe Thursday night. So I, I don't think we're going to win in Geneva. I don't think that's realistic. So it's either got to be Thursday night or November against Denmark. Yeah, but well, we need to win one of those big games. I think we need to win one of those big games. And I know you can go with the three draws and the win in Tbilisi theory, but I, I think we're going to need to win one of them. And I think Thursday night... I think it's, I chance. think it's I think it's our best chance of of getting a result in regards to uh, what we have compared to what they. I could definitely see us, definitely sorry see us nicking a one 0 I yeah. go back to the Wales game um, when McLean scored in Cardiff. I go back to that and look at. I think we've a better squad now than we did then, and you know we are very hard to break down. We've got a good solid keeper. We've got have, yeah. good solid uh, defenders, which you can check out in our stand and eleven show. We will go through. Um, uh, our midfielders are capable from set pieces. The thing about it is, Robbie Brady's obviously out, but we have Howard in there who can take the free kicks, set pieces, yeah. and corners, and, and so on. I think Callum Robinson is probably going to come in for Robbie Brady, and his confidence has got to be sky high. He he scored a goal. He he made a goal on on Saturday as well, and. Uh, He's going to be. He has to be buzzing for Thursday night, and I, he has to start. I think he will start, but I think he has to start. Don't be giving so. away all the, all the shouts for the for, for the show. But, uh, no, no, you're dead right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I do agree with you on okay. that. He, he's our form player at the moment. You know, he's, yeah. he's the one who's um, he probably our only player firing on all cylinders from a striker point of view uh, at the highest level. Well, he is because I mean Long's not in there. Obafemi's with the twenty ones. And you're kind of looking around the Premier League. Other than that, we, we, we haven't got much else up there. Aaron Connolly made his debut for um, Brighton against Man City, but they lost 4-0. Um, well, we so got well, David well McGold McGoldrick, McGoldrick playing with we have McGoldrick, Robinson yeah, as well. Yes, yeah. yes, but he's not scoring. He's not is, scoring, is my no. point. Yeah, um, yeah. Albeit he's working hard for the team. Yeah. Um, but yes, they're going to obviously have that link-up partnership, I think. And McGoldrick, I think, is going to play a, a big part because we're going to need a, a la large parts of the game. I imagine we're going to need the ball sticking up top, and he does a great job of doing that. But he's yeah. playing against good, hard, you know, veteran centre halves there. So yeah, and but he, he is somebody that can can when the ball goes up to him, it does stick, and he can he can pick out a pass as well, and maybe he can pick out the pass to to send Robinson through. Yeah, maybe get that crucial. Well, I think that's yeah. going to be key as well. I'm going to think that that that. Uh, Whatever the front three is, we're not going to give it away. Um, the, whatever the front three is, if 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 Robinson's coming deep, then you'd imagine that the attacking midfield that should be bombing on to when he comes deep, that he goes beyond them. So there's still always three in attack, rather than what we used to always do, is where we drop back and our defender, our midfielders are behind the halfway line, and we're just yeah. constantly bringing them back on us. 
I hope that's not the case. McCarthy said today that he wants the similar performance from the Georgia game. And if we get that and we get the same result, I don't see anybody complaining oh, about that. Oh, it looks be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, well, I think the first thing is the performance. So we, we need a performance. Uh, we need the crowd. We need everyone to be up for it on Thursday night as well. And, well, I think uh, I think as well. You mentioned the crowd. There. I think the crowd needs to bring that, you know, intimidating atmosphere back. Yeah, I think it's been missing. I mean, I, I, there was a lot of stuff uh, on social media and elsewhere. It was the anniversary of the the Dutch game at, at the weekend, the two thousand and one. And I mean, just even thinking back to that, the hairs of the back of your neck stand up because the atmosphere it was, it was so loud, and. Uh, it should be that loud. It probably won't be, but it should be on Thursday night as well. It's it's just as key. I mean, it's an absolutely crucial qualifier, and I think people are tending to forget. I mean, well, first of all, the build-up has been very low key. There's been very little about it in the the TV and the newspapers uh, uh, that you'd normally get for such a crucial September window. And this campaign is even more important because we have. There are four games in Dublin next June in the Euros, and we could have three of those. We could have three of our group games at home. If we qualify, we're guaranteed two, and we draw lots with Spain, assuming they qualify for the third game. So, can you imagine three games in Dublin, in in the Euros? It it would be absolutely amazing. It would be fantastic, and the the whole country would be buzzing. That we would be talking about nothing else. And you'll probably have two or three hundred thousand people screaming for tickets, and I think Thursday's not sold out yet, which amazes me. I don't know, it's something wrong. Following on from from what you're saying there, like obviously <laughs> the people are complaining all the time about all oh, the players aren't good enough and all, but like we had we had similar squads over the last five six years. And the atmosphere, you think of the games like the Germany game, Bosnia game, big nights like that. Um, you think that was when the crowd played their bit. The, the players will feed off the crowd. And I think that's what we need to get. You know, we need to intimidate Switzerland. And you look at what Celtic do, big European nights. You know, how many times have people said that oh, the Irish fans are the best fans in the world? They sing the whole way. When was the last time you heard that? Yeah, no, I think I think the best fans in the world has probably gone a bit stale at this point, and you see yeah. all the empty seats and everything. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the, we don't have a, a noisy, a noisy home home support. I mean, I, I, I've seen, frankly, much better around Europe, and sadly, but uh, it's it, the it, it's been a long time. And you go back the Germany game and the Bosnia game, as you mentioned, but we also had. Crucial games that the stadium has been half empty, such as the I remember the Georgia game and qualifying for Euro twenty sixteen. Uh, there was twenty seven thousand at it, and it didn't even feel like it was twenty seven. It felt less. Yeah, and the place was dead. I mean, that was an absolutely crucial game. We won that one nil. That was probably the night that set up the Germany game. Had we not beaten Georgia, that's the Coleman goal. Yeah, yeah, that was many. That so, was a good little solo goal, but shame. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, like just kind of just finish up on ourselves, like uh, Ireland as a team. Like if you look at, you know, uh, you're talking about players coming in off, um, you know, good runs and so like that. Ender Stevens has really adapted well to life in the Premier League. I think John Egan um, has been a bit. I wouldn't say. I think he's making mistakes, but he's learning from them. If that makes sense. I mean, if you look at uh, some of the goals that were scored the weekend. In the championship, you probably would have got away with that, but in the Premier League, you won't. And I think he's he's learning that, and I think it's a good it's a good little learning curve from early doors. Get the mistakes. Yeah, and, I uh, mean, when he's been up, uh, who was he up against Leicester? They played Leicester, wasn't it? Jamie Vardy. He was up yeah. against Chelsea away at the, the weekend, so it, it is a step up from the championship. Yeah, well, I don't think he was yeah. at fault in the Leicester game. Was his centre half uh, okay. drifted into midfield, and they was left with two players. And he was, you know, by the time the ball okay. came to him, he took a touch and it was bang in the back of the net. There wasn't a lot he could do. But at the weekend for Abraham's goal, there was just a mix of between a mix him up, and yeah. the centre back, okay. and just a lack of communication really. Yeah. But I do think. Um, you know we are going to need to be compact. We, we we can't really allow for mistakes, and I think that Mick's going to go for a very experienced side and look to not concede many goals. And whether we get goals, I think he's going to try and look for similar tactics to the Denmark game. Now, whether we can play in the last fifteen minutes, like 
uh, versus Denmark, if we could do that against Switzerland for large periods of the, of the game, or if we play against Georgia, where we were creating lots of chances, we just probably didn't score a lot. But we could see that we were trying to you know, play differently, get the ball down. It wasn't all hoofball. Um, we were trying to get the ball down, play, and do things like that. And that's... Mick was, was, was saying basically today in the press conference that he'd like to see us similar enough uh, performance to the Georgia game. Yeah, and I mean, one thing I even go back to Mick's previous campaign is he, he did tend to, to get the big performances and the big results at home. I mean, if you go back, you go back again. I keep going back to that Holland match it brings. But, I, I mentioned this yeah. to him today. He didn't seem to be too fond of going back to talk about that memory. But, but even the Holland game, you go back before that, because in the, in the previous campaign, we had big home wins against Croatia, who had just been third in the world. We beat them 2-0. That was my Dublin. first game. Well, there you go. And, uh, and then we followed up by beating uh, what was then Yugoslavia. We beat them a year later in an absolute... When Lansdowne Road was rocking that night, uh, Mark Kennedy with a spectacular winner. And, and Robbie Keane scored as well, didn't he? Oh, God, I can't remember yeah, who got the first one. Was, 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 was it was Robbie? Yeah. Day, yeah. yeah, okay, maybe it was right. I can't remember. Well, Ken, I can remember Ken Mark Kennedy's well, yeah. into, into the South Terrace was a... It was a, a stunning shot, uh, and I mean we were, and I suppose the thing we, we maybe we lost a few of the the away games, but we we were winning the home games, which we we didn't tend to do after that. I mean, after that that Dutch game, I'm trying to think our next big home win. I mean, I I can't think of any kind of home wins under Brian Kerr, Steve Staunton, even going into trap. I mean. I, I'm struggling now, but maybe I'm forgetting something obvious. But you're probably getting up to the likes of the Bosnia and Germany for our next big home wins, uh, either in the the old or new stadium. Or Estonia, no. We didn't even beat Estonia. We won away. Oh yeah, yeah sorry, four nil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, and, and even still, I wouldn't exactly be. I know it was a playoff in the context of the game, but they they, they were very weak opposition. We were very lucky yeah. to get them. I, I, and well, send it off. So. Yeah, uh, we didn't win. Um, Okay, we beat Armenia, I suppose, but we didn't beat any of the, the. We didn't beat Slovakia, and we lost at home to Russia in, in qualifying for 2012. Um, we failed to beat Scotland. We didn't beat Poland uh, for 2014. We beat Germany, obviously, which I think was the, and then we beat Bosnia in the playoff. Um, but yeah, I think there was quite a gap there where we weren't winning home games. Whereas under Mick, the last time, beat the Dutch, um, beat Yugoslavia, beat Croatia. Um, certainly two wins against the Swiss and the Danes will will definitely qualify us. Um, probably we need to win one of them. And, uh, well, if we can get the crowd and hopefully Thursday night could be a real shot in the arm because it's just been, I've said it already, it's just been such a low-key build-up. It, it doesn't feel like there is a massive game on Thursday night. I mean, people are talking about the GAA, about the rugby. It's... Um, and that's dominating the sports coverage. And, OK, maybe it's going to pick up in the next couple of days, but it's... Uh, and, and, I mean, as I said, the tickets are still on sale. We're getting emails virtually every day from the FEI pushing the tickets, which isn't a good sign. And it's... Um, I don't know where all these fans are screaming they can't get tickets. Um, tickets are on sale. Yeah. Um, that's in these, in, these, in these groups on Facebook, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, there's online. people online saying the fans aren't looked after and all that. I mean, tickets are on, go to the FEI website, go to Ticketmaster. The tickets are on sale. Um, there's ads on the radio, there's ads everywhere at the moment. So yeah. it, it's not a good sign because um, obviously the GA aren't pushing the tickets for the All-Ireland. They don't need to. It's sold out. Rugby aren't pushing the tickets for the World Cup. They don't need to. And... Uh, it's just I don't think it looks good, and it doesn't say a lot for um, for our fans, um, best fans in the world. Sorry, not at the moment. <laughs> well, maybe after a, a win versus Switzerland at, at the uh, <laughs> on Thursday, sorry, um, that might change. But just just to wrap it up, uh, your score prediction and goal scorer or or errors, whatever way you want to look at. Okay, my my heart says one nil to us, but I'm I'm actually my head would say a one one draw. And I'm going to go with, with Callum Robinson with his first international goal. Yeah, no. not bad. I was going to say 1-0, Callum Robinson myself. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping okay. for, well, a, hope. for a 1-0 win. <laughs> uh, I know you're hoping, but I, I'm just going to go all right. out there. You know, uh, if you're a better man, stick on 1-0, Callum Robinson. Or 
if you're feeling a little bit funny, uh, 2-1 Shane Duffy any time. That'd be... Okay. Wouldn't be a bad, bad show. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, and what do you think about what Gary's saying about getting tickets or whatever? Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, don't forget to drop a like on the video as it helps YouTube tell people to come and check out our channel. So uh, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to check out our Starting 11 show.